Hey everyone and welcome back to another Warcraft video. So, it's 2020 and looking back, what a year it's been. We've had a few rough spots, that's for sure. I mean, 2019 only had one major patch, at least by the Legion era definition of a patch. 8.3, uh, it's pretty late. There's no two ways about that. But with its release finally on the horizon and Shadowlands being later on this year, you know what? It'll be pretty darn hard for WoW in 2020 to not beat out WoW in 2019. So let's talk about what to expect. When will Shadowlands launch? When will the beta hit? What are we to expect with 8.3? What's it going to mean for the future? And what a better way to kick off 2020 than by making things super convenient and secure via Dashlane, today's sponsor. They're my favorite password manager and they're one that does far more than just that, offering dark web scanning, a VPN, and more. And you can get 10% off with my code at the link in the video description. Now, Dashlane will generate high security passwords for all of your sites and then through its extensions, it will automatically log you in. That means that yes, you basically never have to manually type in a password again. It's all just handled for you. You can even use Dashlane as iOS's default autofill now, which is super handy. All your info is locally decrypted using your master password, so if Dashlane itself was hacked, they would be like breaking in to the bank, but finding out that the bank doesn't have the key to the vault. Then also, if you use a site and the site gets hacked, Dashlane will send you a security alert. You get all of that in one app across all platforms, and if you follow my link and use my promo code Ballyler, you will get 10% off. So thanks to them for sponsoring this video and supporting the team, and with that, Let's get into Warcraft in 2020. So patch 8.3 is just about to be out with the raid following only a week after. And past that, I mean, there's a decent chance we'll get a patch 8.3.5 and epilogue. I mean, Legion 7.3.5. That happened after the BFA reveal and it was used to establish part of this expansion's premise. So Shadowlands, I mean, it's a bit mental with its lore implications, right? We know that Bolvar raises up the new DKs because he's worried about the Shadowlands stuff. So chances are, if we're going to get an epilogue patch, I'd say it'll follow a bit of that plotline. Maybe we'll even join in on the hunt for Sylvanas. Could be quite cool. I would expect a new pre-rendered cutscene and uh, just a few decently significant lore nods. Timing-wise, well, 7.3.5, that launched a month before the Legion beta and a month and a half after Antorus, the Burning Throne, opened. Those timings would not work right now. I mean, sure, a month and a half after the Nihilotha raid, that would make sense, but a beta any time past March, honestly, that would be extremely late. But of course, we'll get on to beta later on. So, so when we look at the 8.3 design, what does that actually tell us about the future and what Blizzard are actually looking at for Shadowlands? Well, I think clearly they're moving away from Titan Forging, right? It's gone. Instead, they're adding extra power progression to our gear through uh, status effects. It can be positive and negative, so they're doing that instead of item level. Look, that could be fraught with issues, but it could at least keep item level bloat to a slightly more sane level. And I mean, still, there is more player control in that system than there was with Titan Forging, so it could be good. And then just past that, the idea of balancing negatives and positives. That's pervasive throughout like much of the BFA patch cycle, so I imagine that'll carry forward. Then another key thing is replayable content, right? Horrific visions. They seem to be better than islands, but I mean, that'll all be for naught if they're just a walk in the park if you go in there with a group. And just for context there, the stakes are super high in solo, right? But with reses being available to groups, the stakes kind of are diminished. But still, Torghast, it's a major new feature in Shadowlands. We're clearly seeing this style of content continue with the game. And overall here, I actually suspect that Blizz think that world quests are a bit dull, and I think they want to give non-competitive players, right, so not dungeons, not raids, I think they've generally wanted to give them more things to do, like the warfronts, the islands, the visions. Of course, some of those things have failed, some haven't, but, you know, that's where Torghast is. So for good or ill, that seems to be their direction. So I think that's mainly what we can learn about Shadowlands from 8.3, but uh, what about Shadowlands testing itself? The first thing is that alpha and beta often don't mean that much for most WoW expansion tests. Generally, I just refer to the whole like testing process as beta. I mean, it's not like the strict technical definitions of those words are really holding true anyway. Right, BFA was not tested enough. Blizzard know that, they've admitted that, and when it was being tested, they didn't really act in people's feedback either. It was a disaster, one that I'm sure they are not keen to repeat, given how it sabotaged two years of the game's life. Now, Legion had a massive testing period. Now, technically had a nine month span, but that's a bit misleading because servers were shut down over Christmas and it was initially very limited, but still, it was very well tested, rigorously tested. Uh, Blizzard did take a lot of time with that. They needed to, every class was being revamped 
revamped. With BFA though, I mean, technically at seven months of testing, it's quite a bit, but towards the latter months, it became clear that Blizzard either were not listening to testers or that they simply did not have the capacity to act. Something that I actually think is unsurprising given the QC issues of the BFA pre-patch. But at any rate, Shadowlands needs robust testing. It needs to have max level pre-made characters so that endgame can be tested. This is something that Legion had, but BFA did not. And the impact of that is pretty darn clear. Now, thinking about dates, they're not hitting the August release window that BFA and Legion did. I think there is no way in hell that's going to happen. That's just where, you know, it's just where we are. I mean, technically, they're locked into 2020 because that's what they say in the pre-order disclaimer. So I expect it to be maybe a September to October expansion release if we're being optimistic. I mean, being real, that's not ideal timing. Like, Activision Blizzard will not be happy because that will just mean stiff competition from other game companies. Those are very busy months. But if testing begins right at the start of February and lasts for seven months, then at minimum, you'd be looking at a September launch, likely late September. If that testing lapses and only starts in, uh, say, March, you're looking at an October, maybe a November release. Now, while a shorter testing period is totally possible, I do think it's unlikely. You see, last BlizzCon, right, they seemed earlier than ever in development. They barely showed gameplay. They were so sparse in details, and the stage floor build of the game was essentially the 8.3 PTR with a new zone. Overarching class changes had not been implemented yet, and just loads of things. It was clearly not Shadowlands. Now, in terms of itemization, well, from what I understand, that's mostly going to be based on the reception to 8.3's corrupted gear system. So because of that, I just don't think we're looking at a four to five month beta testing uh, process, right? And I mean, especially if you remember that for that final month of beta testing, it's about polishing QC, not making changes. And then you've got to remember the dev attention will be split by the pre-patch at some point. So yeah, this is going to be a late expansion, but in terms of overall content routes, I've got to rail it back in here because it's probably less than the Kata, the Wrath to Kata one. It's certainly going to be less than the Mop to Wad one or the Wad to Legion one. So overall, it's actually not that bad, but clearly, like, extra dev time that's been eaten up by keeping BFA alive, that clearly has taken its toll. I mean, it's pretty clear Blizzard are playing defense here. I mean, they're probably aware of that. They probably don't like it. Uh, but, you know, given the backfire of BFA, I think they just wanted to go light on details with this BlizzCon. And maybe they're further along than we think. But just based on based on reading in between the lines, I don't necessarily think so. Okay, next up, pre-patch. We essentially know nothing about the pre-patch bar a dev suggesting that it would be useful for leveling up your alts. Now, the Shadowlands pre-patch, that will bring the level squish and the new leveling system. So that would make a lot of sense. That system is just faster anyway. Now, expansion pre-patches, they normally, like, they launch about a month before release, so you're probably going to see that in August to September, at the very earliest, I imagine. Uh, now, in terms of the content, I mean, I don't imagine it'll be as good as Legion's, that was really a good one, but I hope it's better than the BFA one, right? Because Legion had us all going out into the world, doing stuff with our friends, BFA is just drip-fed us 15 minutes of brain-dead gameplay a week. I think we all want more of a world event, something we can log in and do with our friends, so... I just implored Blizzard, I think that is the direction to go in for the Shadowlands event. So with that, let's just talk about the experience of WoW, because if you're not testing, then it's 8.3, maybe 8.3.5, and that's pretty much it. Now for 8.3, I think it does have interesting systems, but it does not have a lot of content. Uh, certainly, it's a very playable patch. I actually think it moves WoW in the right direction in many different ways, but it's not going to last forever, and there will be dull months. Well, there would be if it weren't for Classic. Phase 3, that's going to bring Blackwing Lair. Phase 4 will bring uh, Zulgrub. And, you know, Z uh, Zulgrub, it's a smaller, more accessible raid, and that will likely, you know, boost the endgame engagement quite a bit, as it did back in vanilla. So, expect to see those roll out, I'd say, in short enough order during Q1 2020, and maybe a bit of Q2. As for AQ, well, I imagine they want to hold that back a bit, but, uh, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if they, you know, put it out in maybe the first six months of, of this year. Now, as for Naxxramas, gotta be real here, a part of me would be surprised that they'd even put it out this year. I mean, it could happen around or maybe so, or like shortly after BlizzCon and maybe BlizzCon 2020, we'll talk about like what's next for Legacy WoW, maybe it's TBC or something like that. But uh, if you're into Classic, certainly I think you'll have things to do. Now, I mentioned BlizzCon 2020, so let's fully talk about it. What are we going to likely get? So I'm anticipating release dates for Overwatch 2 and Diablo 4, as well as the reveal of patch 9.1 and 9.2. 
Past that, I think we might see another project from Blizzard. I actually do think that. I've got no idea what it could be, but we do know there are multiple projects there at the company that we've not heard of, and, well, if 2021 is being held down by Overwatch 2 and Diablo 4, they'll likely need to start revealing what they're going to be doing in the longer term. Now, release-wise, it does seem like 2020 will just be the year of expansions, right? There'll be Hearthstone ones, and then, of course, there'll be WoW. And being real, if Blizzard was to only have one major release in a year, you would want it to be World of Warcraft. After all, World of Warcraft is Blizzard's largest largest franchise in terms of revenue, and if memory serves me correctly, Activision Blizzard it sort of implied, I think it was their Q3 earnings report, that basically World of Warcraft and Call of Duty were their two biggest franchises. So, I mean, financially, it'll probably keep them good in the following year. All right, so that's Blizz covered. What about us? Well, we're going to be pretty darn busy in 2020. So, right now, we're getting stuck into production of the TBC season of our Complete History series, and the goal there is to get those out steadily every two weeks, uh, hitting Patreon first before YouTube. It's, uh, you know, it's a more niche series. Uh, not everyone is into that historical content. When we upload those videos, it actually hurts the channel because they perform under par and the algorithm punishes your other videos, which isn't ideal. But yeah, the two weeks, that should keep the channel balanced. Now, we're also working on another series, uh, hopefully monthly, and that will be going into some of the more wild, like, cultural stories of WoW. I mean, you know, crazy stuff like the funeral raid, just events in WoW's history that were player-driven that, you know, are really interesting. I mean, hey, late vanilla shamans, that's going to be a fun one. Uh, the CM who went on the meltdown, there's just so much to cover there. So, there's that. Lore-wise, I want to do one every fortnight. I think that's about best. Weekly, I think that just makes the channel too samey. Uh, you know, late uh, 2019 kind of taught us that. And now once beta hits, uh, though, of course, we'll be going harder than ever. Shadowlands beta needs to be tested, right? And while I get, okay, part of the reason why you give access to YouTubers like me and Preach is the free advertising, but uh, I'm going to be giving them a lot more than just that. And I mean, thinking about, say, Preach, I'm pretty sure he will be as well, because after all, he was pretty much first in with the, uh, with the very accurate takes on how BFA would go, and moving forward, yeah, just the BFA testing period, that has me hyper aware of the role of being really as critical as I can be in that testing period. A lot of people in the comments of, you know, videos I will make, they will say, it's beta, couple is a slack, it's, it's not even done yet. And uh, to those comments, I'll pretty much say, I, you know, you said that in BFA, and I, it wasn't done. But guess how that turned out when we sort of held our tongues? No, we've got to be really, really strident. Being real, if, if Shadowlands is another BFA in terms of performance, I mean, that's wow, I think, permanently notched down a tier. This is make or break, it is do or die, Blizzard need all the help they can get. And I really do think that. They have made some very silly decisions, some very inexplicable decisions over the last while, and, uh, you know, there's every chance they'll make them again if people are not just absolutely hammering them throughout this beta process and being as rigorous as they possibly can be. It's probably going to sting for the devs, it's probably going to sting for us making those videos and, uh, you know, people on the forums and on the discords giving feedback, but it is more important than ever. And that's what I'm going to be doing during beta. So, that's what uh, me and the WoW team are going to be doing uh, over the next year. That's our goal. Uh, upstairs, though, from where that's all going on in the game development office, well, game devs are making more progress than ever, and you're going to be seeing our efforts more than ever before this year. Uh, if you like choice-driven narrative content that's challenging, that's sincere, that's not full of, oh, just, you know, irony and all those sort of tired things, doesn't pull punches, uh, this is going to be a game for you, really is. Now, we're going to take it to crowdfunding within the first half of the year, that's the current intent, and if you're wondering why we've waited for so long to bring it to crowdfunding, honestly, it's simple enough. I self-funded all the development of the technical stuff, the risky stuff, we're now at the part where, you know, the questions are answered, the R&D is done, and it's a straight production to the finish. I was very clear early on that I never wanted to do crowdfunding, like in a position where, you know, stuff was not fully de-risked. We are now at that place, and uh, yeah, you, you'll be seeing stuff there. And uh, we did a minor little reveal of a few details over on Discord if you're interested. And then I guess also you can follow the studio's uh, Twitter account if you'd like to hear more about that. So. There you go. That is World of Warcraft in 2020. That's a bit of what we're going to be doing in 2020. As for my channel thoughts going into this year, um, I'm keen to do better, right? This uh, last December was a humongous disaster, uh, both in the personal life and in the professional life. It was very much not ideal. You probably saw that in our quantity of content just, you know, disappearing in the, in the end of December on both channels, which, I mean, it sucked, but... There's sometimes, right, if something's not going to happen, what you've got to do is just take the responsible decision. You've got to acknowledge, right, it's not going to happen. I'm not going to force it. Just going to take the time to do things right. 
and hit fresh in, in the new year. And that is what I decided to do uh, personally. And hopefully that will create less content for everyone else who is involved in what we're doing. Uh, so yeah, that's that's kind of uh, what happened. Moving into this uh, part of the year, just in terms of production, we've done a lot of thinking. I mean, we're actually a, quite a good bit ahead on, uh, in terms of scripts now, which should be super helpful. And uh, yeah, just in terms of content, you know, we're trying to innovate, trying to keep things fresh. We've got a bunch of really in-depth, super fun lore that I think, I think you're going to love. I mean, if you like space goats, uh, we've got a video for you in the works. It should be really good. And uh, yeah, then I mean, on, on the game dev side, uh, stuff is, stuff's going really well. Uh, yeah, I can't, I mean, I can't exactly just, you know, splurge it all out here, right? We've got to, you know, do that in a, in a reasonable fashion when we, you know, have a plan of how we actually want to tell you about everything. But uh, stuff's going really good there. It should be quite exciting. Anyway. That is, uh, that's what's up. That's the current plans. Let me know, what are your plans? What do you think about WoW going into 2020? I mean, for me, you know, 8.3, I'm happy enough to play it. Uh, you know, the core system seemed pretty darn good. I'm a bit worried about the quantity of content, but certainly the visions are quite fun. And I really just want to get into the new raid. Uh, I think I'm going to be doing just a quick clear and normal at the start, and then uh, just doing some heroic progression. You know, nice chilled out, just experience the bosses, experience the, you know, just the designs that have went into them, but, you know, not super hardcore, the, you know, sort of grinding against Mythic forever, that's just not really my speed, to be honest. So, yeah, that's what I'm going to be doing. It's going to be a good foray back into raiding that I'm really excited for. It's been, uh, it's been a long time since I've really properly got in there. I mean, for me, if I think about the glory days of raiding, that's Throne of Thunder. <laughs> So, or well, Throne of Thunder, uh, TOC, bit of ICC, some of the initial Cata raids, those are the ones that sort of stick out in my mind. So, I mean, in many ways, I am a has-been, but, uh, you know, I'm going to try to stop being a has-been, let's just say, with patch 8.3. So, let me know what you think. Thank you very much for watching, and with that, I will see you next time.